With all the discounts and promotions that were running over the holidays, I'm sure that a lot of people bought XHP. So I figured it was the perfect time to make some videos about XHP and exactly how to use each of the features. So today I'm gonna to be going over torque reduction upshifts and torque punch, but I am gonna be making some more videos in the near future about the other features. So if you wanna see those, definitely subscribe so you don't miss them, but let's get right into it. So you may notice that I'm not actually sitting in the BMW. That's because I'm sitting in the Cobra. And the reason for that is because this car is a manual. And I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to explain the science behind torque reduction and torque punch by using a manual transmission as an example. So in a manual car, you have three pedals, the clutch, the brake, and the gas. And on upshifts, you're only using two of those pedals to control the car. You're using your left foot to modulate the clutch in order to smooth each gear change or bend gears if that's what you're into. And you're also modulating the gas with each gear change depending on how you're driving and your driving style. Each gear change, you're using these pedals together, not independently. So with XHP, picture that torque punch is your left foot and torque reduction is your right foot. And these settings work together to allow you to change the driving style of how your car uses the clutch and the gas pedal. Now this is kind of dumbed down. I will say that it's a little bit more complicated than that at a programming level, but just as a basic understanding, that's kind of how we can picture torque punch and torque reduction. Picture that torque punch represents your clutch characteristics and torque reduction represents your throttle characteristics. If I'm already helping you understand the difference between these two features, do me a solid and give this video a like so the algorithm knows that this video is actually worth a watch. But let's hop in the BMW and talk more about these features in depth. Torque reduction. So to understand torque reduction, first you're gonna to need to understand how the DME actually works during upshifts. So during upshifts, the transmission is actually calling to the DME and requesting a specific amount of torque output from the engine to collaborate with the amount of clutch input that is also gonna be needed for that. And while that sounds a little bit complicated, if we relate that back to the Cobra, that's basically like if you were to give it a little bit of throttle in between shifts, where more throttle equals more torque, less throttle equals less torque from the engine. And while that's not exactly what's happening, it should give you a better understanding of just kind of what's going on. But what does that actually mean for the settings? It means that more torque reduction calls for less torque during each upshift, and less torque reduction calls for more torque during each upshift. And while there's no magic number to this, in general, if you increase the torque reduction, you're going to have slower shifts, but in turn, have better clutch life, and may also get a brap noise during upshifts, and less torque reduction is going to have faster shifts, but is gonna be harder on your clutch, and you're also not gonna get that brap sound on upshifts. So for torque punch, XHP describes that as clutch kicking, and if you follow drifting or you've been driving a manual for a while, you probably know what that means, but basically, Clutch kicking is whenever you stab your foot onto the clutch and then pull it back off while going full throttle and that disengagement and quick re-engagement of the clutch while you have your foot on the gas breaks the rear tires loose, which can be helpful during drifting. And while that's not exactly what's going on with the torque punch feature, it does feel a little bit similar. And this setting depends greatly on your type of build that you have as well as what you're trying to achieve with your build. So if you have a high horsepower build with an aftermarket clutch that's super sticky, you might want to actually decrease the torque punch setting because you're going to be applying less pressure on that clutch to compensate for that extra friction, and that's going to help your shifts feel a little bit smoother. Or if your focus is purely on the efficiency of your acceleration, you might want to turn up torque punch because that's going to make your transmission as efficient as possible in energy transfer where your shifts are just going to be like bang. You know what I mean? Banging gears like Hector in his Honda Civic as opposed to double clutching like you should. But that's really up to you and it depends on your build. So that's each feature by itself, but how do you make these two actually work together? So like I said before, during each upshift, the transmission is actually sending a request to the DME to reduce the torque output in order to ease each upshift. And according to XHP, this time frame that it's doing that is between 100 and 200 milliseconds. So it's like super quick. So depending on the amount of torque drawn from the engine, which is affected by the torque reduction settings, the transmission is also doing a calculation to determine how much pressure it should apply on the clutch, which is also affected by the torque punch settings. So since the torque punch calculation is affected by the torque reduction settings, 
What I would recommend is first figure out what your preferred torque reduction settings are. And then as you figure that out, you can then adjust the torque punch settings to complement the torque reduction settings. And this usually means you're going in the same direction as the torque reduction settings. So if you increase the torque reduction, you're also going to want to increase the torque punch settings and vice versa, of course. So just as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and flash my car with stage three. And I know that's gonna be a little bit more aggressive than I'm gonna like for daily driving. So for torque reduction, I actually like the speed of the shifts, so I'm going to keep it where it is. But then for torque punch, I'm going to turn that down one notch. And now I know what I said earlier is that you change them both to complement each other. Uh, but in this case, I'm turning down torque punch because I want it to apply a little bit less pressure on the clutch as it's engaging. So now the next step is going to be taking it for a quick test drive just to see what I think of the new settings. And then we can adjust accordingly. And whenever you go to test drive to evaluate your settings, make sure you get your oil up to temp because the transmission shifts a little bit different whenever it's cold, of course. All right, so I've been driving around for about 10 minutes or so and the oil is completely up to temp. And I gotta say, I really like the way it feels. It's definitely not the snappiest I've ever felt my transmission, um, cause I did turn down the torque punch and that's okay. Cause for the most part, whenever I'm driving this car, I'm driving it to and from work cause I'm a normal person, I have a full-time job. And oh my gosh, that was a freaking E60 M5. <laughs> that sounded sick. So to be honest, if I ever was planning on going on a trip to the track or to the Tail of the Dragon again, I probably will change my settings a little bit. But for the stage of life I'm in right now, which is, you know, daily driving this car for the next like four months, um, this is perfect, I think. You can feel the shift. It's not as smooth as it, as it is in like D, but um, it's not like jarring because before it would, every now and then I would get like these kind of hard shifts where you could literally hear the dash kind of like <laughs> creak, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave it where it is, but if, for instance, I thought it was too soft or too firm, then I would go ahead and go back to the settings and adjust accordingly. And that's the beauty of it, you know? With this stuff, you have complete control over everything and you can set it up perfectly to your preferences. One thing that I do notice is that the shifts might be a little bit more audible, so I'm gonna throw my mic on the back so y'all can hear what that sounds like. confusing at first but hopefully I was at least able to give you a basic understanding of what each feature does and if you have any questions please feel free to comment below I do read every comment I love to answer your questions if I have the knowledge to and remember that there are no best settings for this stuff and really the best way to understand anything is through experience so go out to your car mess around with the settings a little bit flash it take it around the block see what feels good and keep joy riding <laughs>